By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing against brand new patron Olivier. Welcome to the channel, Olivier. Thank you for supporting me on patreon.com slash timmytalks. And uh, I'm playing a game of uh, old school magic against him today. He is bringing a pink weenie deck to the table. It's red and it's white. The cool thing about this deck is that it's underpowered. It is very budget friendly, but don't let that fool you because it is a very good deck. And he's taking on my Orbi Tron deck, which is also uh, white and red, but of course, completely different. It's more like a soft prison control deck. And of course, Olivier's uh, deck, the Pink Weenie deck, wants to go really fast. It's really an aggressive deck. Now, before I start with uh, the deck deck section, because I've got beautiful deck photos of both of these decks, I would first like to point out that, as always, you can also choose to skip this section, go straight to the games. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below, because there you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Games. So if you click on MTG Games, It'll take you straight to the uh, to the game action. And also in the same description below, you can find a link to the uh, Patreon page that I just mentioned, patreon.com slash timmytalks to find out how you can support the show. And um, also quite important in the, uh, the description of the video, you can also find more information about the rules. So we're playing Swedish old school rules, meaning no mana burn and no fallen empires in this one. Okay, now let's continue with the deck decks. I'm going to start with the deck of Olivier, his pink weenie brew. Let's have a look. And here we see the list of Olivier pink weenie, so that's red and white. And he told me that this list is inspired by the deck of Juan, a Spanish old school magic player who's had some really good results with this list. Now what I like about it is that it's all black bordered. It just looks really good. Uh, most of it is foreign black bordered, but I like that. I like when you kind of stick to a theme. I don't know if you have that as well, but when I'm building, for example, a revised deck, I want everything to be revised, right? When I'm playing white bordered, I want everything to be white bordered. I think a lot of magic players have this problem. So I'm really just loving the aesthetics of this deck photo, having everything black bordered. Another thing I really like is that it's so budget friendly. They're not even dual lands in here. The most expensive card is that, um, I guess it's an international edition Chaos Orb, right? Um, and that's, again, you know, you wanna play Chaos Orb, but it's not really that necessary in this deck. You could do without Chaos Orb easily. The strength, of course, of this deck is that it's super aggressive. It kind of has that sly buildup where you go Savannah Lions, Iron Claw Orc, Granite Gargoyle, right? One, two, three. And you just slam it down as quickly. And then, of course, in the one slot, you also have your Black Vice. If you if you have that turn one, it's basically an extra Lightning Bolt. Talking about that, there are four bolts in here, four chains in here. So just a lot of aggression. Like, Olivier is not in this for a long game. He wants to be done quickly. He wants to kill me quickly. And that's exactly what I'm worried about. Because my deck, it wants some time, right? It wants to get to Tron. It wants to put that Soft Prison on. I think my Winter Orbs are going to be pretty useless against this list. So yeah, I've got some concerns. He's also playing with white, meaning access to disenchants and after sideboarding, access to divine offering. There are a few cards though that makes my deck really good. And I think one of those is, is the Triskelion. If I can play a trike early, I can probably kill most of his creatures. But yeah, I'm worried about the pace of this deck. Um, another card I want to mention, which I think is always kind of difficult if, if you play this strategy because it's very aggressive but then you still play with swords to plowshares and the reason i'm mentioning that is that swords of course is super good card don't get me wrong but you are giving life to your opponent when you play it on your opponent's creatures that sometimes can be counterproductive but i guess in this case you just want to kill the creatures quickly so that you can continue attacking with yours that kind of makes sense as well anyway this is the deck of olivier it's looking good my man now let's take a look at my deck orbitron and here we see my deck. So this is called Orby Tron, and that's named after the Winter Orb, which is in the deck, and of course the Tron Land. So maybe first start with the Tron Lands in case you're not familiar with it. It's Urza's Tower, Urza's Mine, and Urza's Power Plant. Now these lands just tap for one mana, one generic mana, that's it. But when you've got all three on the board, something magical happens. The tower taps for three, the mine for two, the power plant for two. So all of a sudden, you can have seven mana, right? When I've got that seven mana, I'm hoping to cast, for example, my Triskelion at turn three. That would be kind of ideal. That's a dream scenario. And of course, later on in the game, I can make a huge fireball or a huge disintegrate. That's basically how I want to win it. Now... What are you going to do? That's always the big question. What are you going to do before you have Tron? 
And what I decided to do with this deck is kind of play a soft prison lock with Winter Orb. So Winter Orb is this artifact that says you can only untap one land during your untap step, which is of course pretty annoying. Now the unique thing about Winter Orb is that you can deactivate it by tapping it down. So I'm also playing with Relic Barriers and Icy Manipulators. I can use those to tap down my own Winter Orb at the end step of my opponent so that when I'm at my untap step, the Winter Orb is deactivated. I can untap all my stuff, but hey, that also untaps my Winter Orb. That means that my opponent can only untap one land, but I can untap all my lands. Now, there's another artifact that you can tap down to deactivate, and that is Howling Mine, also in this deck. No coincidence. I can tap the Howling Mine at the right time at the end of my turn, for example, so that my opponent only draws one card, and I draw two cards. So the idea is quite simple. Before I hit Tron, I want to have that lock on the table. I want to draw more cards. I want to make sure my opponent doesn't have a lot of lands to work with so I can stay alive. And that, of course, goes really well with the white control package, the swords, the disenchants. They're going to help me to stay alive long enough so that I can find my Tron and then I can, you know, make a huge fireball, make a huge disintegrate, probably play out some creatures. I've got the Suchis, I've got the Trikes. I also have the Taunus's Coffin Trike combo in here, which is when it works... It feels great. It doesn't always work, but <laughs> when it works, it feels great. And I think the thing with this deck is it's a lot of fun to play. I just it's also, in my opinion, really beautiful to play with the traditional old Tron cards. You know, I love I love those lands. Um, but you know, in a lot of cases, I've played with with this deck at a lot of tournaments. I end up two three or three two, which is okay. You know, I'm not complaining about it. But I'm always trying to find a way. How can I, you know, take this deck? To that next level you know i've had a top eight with this once and i want to see okay can i can i make it good enough to to have that happen more frequently now i also have uh, two kismets on this deck photo i actually took them out i think it's a beautiful card it works together quite well with winter orb but um, while i was playing with it it was always like oh yeah i uh, kismet uh, this is not really going to help me now so what i've decided to do is take it out i've uh, put in a mirror universe and I've, I'm not quite sure what other card I put in there, but perhaps another Maze of If. I'm not 100% sure. We'll just have to, to wait and see. Like I said, I'm constantly tweaking with this deck. Uh, the sideboard is still intact. That's still the same. And I've got two Mazes of If here in the side, so they're definitely coming in after the first game. I'm also playing with two Ivory Towers here. And Ivory Tower is one of those cards that I've been thinking, shouldn't I play it main? You know, because I've got my Howling Mines. It, it can give me some more stability in the early game to make sure that I survive long enough to get into that long game, to get Tron to play out that huge fireball. Um, so, you know, it's it's another consideration. In I think in this matchup, I'll definitely put in the Ivory Towers after the first game because I'm expecting to be under a lot of pressure from Olivier from, uh, from the get-go. Okay, this is my deck. We've already discussed the deck of Olivier. That means we are ready. Let's go to the games. Game number one, here we go. I'm on the play, it seems, starting here with a City of Brass. Six cards in hand, passing the turn. There we see Olivier. Pretty cool play, Matt, by the way, Olivier. I know he's a big fan of Alice as well. That's a format where you play Alliances and Ice Age. That's, of course, the Jester's Cap there. And the Joker in the background. There's a Hammerheim, tapping the Hammerheim. And there's a Vice. Oof. I mean, could be worse. Could be him on the play playing the vice. I mean, now it's only two damage, but still, my deck is not that good at emptying the hand early. So playing uh, an Urza's Mine there, taking a damage, going to 17. What am I going to play out? I mean, I've got a Winter Orb, which is not very effective, but hey, it empties the hand. A Howling Mine would be very risky. Okay, Relic Barrier, that's actually... One of the better cards to play out at this point. It's not useful, but hey, it's an, a card, another card away from my hand, meaning only one damage next turn. Of course, I did uh, take the damage from my own City of Brass. There is another mountain. Are we going to see an Iron Claw Orc here by Olivier? There is the Iron Claw Orc 2 2. So, yeah, that's um, the aggressive start that we kind of expected from Olivier here, looking at his deck. Pink Weenie, very aggressive. And I have to try to stabilize. Ooh, this isn't helping. These only City of Brasses are not great against such an aggressive deck. I'm going to go to 15. Okay, there's an Atok. That's actually pretty nice. Playing a one of Atok in the deck. Of course, being quite good with all the artifacts around. 
So with the Atok, if he attacks, I can consider sacking my Relic to eat it up. It is quite a hefty price to pay because Relic Barrier is pretty important in my deck with Howling Mine and Orb. But I think at this stage, I just have to make sure I don't take a lot of damage. But anyway, we'll see what's going to happen. There's the attack, so now I have to make the decision. And of course, this decision depends on my hand. Like if I have a Howling Mine in hand, for example, or a Swords. Oh, I've got a Swords. Okay, gonna Swords the Iron Claw. I mean, the downside here is that I keep taking damage because of my own City of Brass, and maybe now Oliver tapping three. Yep, there's the Granite Gargoyle. So it would have been better to, in hindsight, of course, to keep the Swords. You know, block the Iron Claw Orc perhaps by sacking the uh, the Relic. And then having that, that Swords left for the Gargoyle. But perhaps, you know, who knows? Attacking here, maybe I have, for example, a Howling Mine in hand. That explains why I want to keep the Relic around. So is Olivier going to block? Just taking the damage. So it's going to go down to 21, of course. Just took uh, two life because of that Swords of Plowshare. It's going to tap two. Okay, there's a Winter Orb. That's that's okay, you know, the Orb uh, makes it difficult. So Olivier can only untap one land. Looks like he's going to untap the Strip Mine. Or not. Okay, going to go for the Mountain, the Hammerheim. Okay, can use that, of course, also to pump the Gargoyle if need be. Attacking here for two. Going to put me on 12. And then, of course, I'm going to tap my own Winter Orb here on end step, so all my things untap on my side of the board. And I have to say, I'm really a little bit sad that I played that Swords on the Iron Claw. But hey, it's always easier looking back at something and thinking, oh, well, I shouldn't have done that. You never know, of course, what's going to happen. Tapping two, there's a Chaos Orb. Okay, so I could consider flipping here. First, I'm going to attack. Another damage, and then I can flip on the Gargoyle. I think I would consider doing it now, because maybe Olivier has a Shatter in hand. Remember, we don't know each other's lists, and of course, after seeing the list, we know that he's not playing with Shatter, but he's playing with Disenchant. But still, I don't have that information. At this point, I don't even know that he's also playing with White. Exactly, so I'm going to flip here. Going to flip on the Gargoyle. Oh, is it a hit? I don't think it is. No, it's not. Remember, if the sleeves touch is still a hit, but I remember this flip because I don't miss that often. And yeah, this was painful. Not even a mi millimeter of, of difference between those two sleeves, but yeah. It's a miss is a miss. It is what it is, but uh, this can have big um, consequences for me because now he can keep attacking with the gargoyle Putting me on 10, and remember, I mean, he's playing four bolts, four chains. Haven't seen a single one yet, so I'm really in trouble. Talking about trouble, there's the uh, Mishra's Factory. And more trouble here, a Granite Gargoyle. Yeah, I really needed this uh, this Chaos Sorb to hit. I mean, this is, this is huge. I need at least a Swords. There's the attack. Not sure if this is a good attack, though, because uh, Oliver has that uh, factory, so he can uh, untap the factory. Maybe if he has, has another land in hand, he can swing in for six. I mean, I do, of course, have the Relic Barrier then to tap down the uh, factories. That's probably the way I'm thinking here. Not doing anything else, by the way. So, um, yeah, it's not looking great for me. Remember, my deck has no flyers. I've got four trikes, four Suchis. That's it. There's the attack. Okay, going to tap one, going to go to nine. Do I have another Swords? Another Swords to Plowshares. So, I mean, if that hit would have been been a hit, you know, I wouldn't have taken any damage. But, hey, it is what it is. Going to go to 7. Oh, man. Olivier back to 20, by the way. Going to tap down everything. So, everything tap, untaps on my side. Didn't really have to, by the way, because only you tapped one land. But still, used to it, I guess. Okay, there is Howling Mine. You know, now things are going to work for me. The problem is I'm on seven. Attacking here for one. Olivier dropping back to 20. I guess he was still on 21. Oh, man, this is tough. 
Ooh, he can now untap the factory. I shouldn't have attacked with the ATOC. He's untapping the factory. Oh, man, this is not great. Drawing his card for turn, he can now swing in for four, put me on three, and then finish it next turn with a chain or a bolt. Oh, man, this, this attack with the ATOC was not smart. That's understating it. So untapping only one land. Drawing two cards for turn. Tapping down, of course, my own mine again with the two extra cards in hand. So, I mean, the deck is doing what it wants to do. The problem is I'm on three. And, I mean, I'm as good as Toast. Need to find a way to gain life here. I mean, Mirror Universe would be brilliant. I don't even have, have enough mana though to, to play it. Still no Tron, by the way. I mean, a Trike would also help, right? It could kill the, uh, the Flyer. So let's see if I can get another turn. I doubt it. Yep, there's a chain. End of the road here, yeah. I think, you know, looking back at this, there are a few key moments in, in game one. The first is the flip. If I wouldn't have missed the flip, that would have made a big change. And of course, the decision that I made attacking with the ATOC where I really shouldn't have, then I wouldn't have taken the two extra points of damage. And then, then I would have had some more meat on the bone, you know, and, and who knows, and, and then anything is possible. But hey, this is just game one. I'm gonna take a deep breath. And we are going to go, uh, go into our sideboards and we will catch back up with you in game number two. Game number two. Here we go. Look at that. Taking the mulligan here. On the play, of course, after losing that first game. So starting with six in hand. I believe Olivier is keeping seven. And there is a power plant. Urza's power plant and a Mox Ruby. Okay. Emptying the hand here. Four cards. Passing the turn. Let's see if, uh, if I can get this game. I hope so. Let's see what Olivier can do. There is a Plains passing the turn. I don't think... Did we see a Plains in game one, by the way? I don't think we did. I wonder how we uh, sideboarded. Probably going to see some Divine Offerings. Anyway, there's an Urza's Tower. So if I can find a mine next turn, I've got Tron. That would be pretty spectacular. Tron turn three. That's kind of, you know, living the dream. Then hopefully I've got a payoff in hand as well. Anyway, tapping two here. There's a Chaos Orb. And drawing my card for turn. So that means I believe five in hand. There's a Plateau. So I guess I don't have Tron or I don't want to play out Tron. Do I have a Disenchant? Okay, there's a Disenchant on the Chaos Orb. That's quite nice, of course, uh, Oliver being tapped out. Another thing I could have done here, and, and let me know when it comes how you feel about this. I could have just kept the, the, the mana open, pass the turn, see if Olivier was going to use this orb, and then he responds disenchant. But I mean, I was like, okay, it stepped out now, now I have the option. Okay, there he goes. There's a Granite Gargoyle hitting the board, 2-2 two, two Flyer. And for one red, you can give it plus 0, plus 0, oh, the, the Gargoyles, sorry, plus 0, plus 1, of course. The Gargoyles really did a great job for Olivier in, uh, in game one. Flying creatures are quite difficult for me to deal with. Look at this, just passing the turn. No Suchi, no Winter Orbs, no Howling Mines, no Relics, no Ices, nothing. Just taking damage here, going to 18. And he's tapping two. There's an Iron Claw Orc. And drawing my card for turn. There's another Plateau. Now I've got six. Do I have a Triskelion? That would be quite nice. There's a trike hitting the board. That is pretty cool. And of course, uh, I can now kill the, uh, the Gargoyle. Yeah, doing that straight away. Why? Because Olivier doesn't have any mountains untapped. So it's just a 2-2. So it's quite easy for me to kill. So I'm going to keep this 2-2 creature. And I think that the Iron Claw Orc can now not even attack. So this is great. This Triskelion is, is really, really good for me. Ooh, a quick sort of plowshares though. And look at that, just taking the life here, understanding my role in this matchup. I'm really the control player, so I'd rather have an extra life going back up to 20 than, you know, to, to shoot that one point of damage to Olivier. Now he can attack me, by the way, again with the Iron Claw. So I went back up to 20, but now back down to 18 again because of that attack. 
There's a city of brass, so I mean, I've got enough mana. The question is, do I have creatures? Tapping four, we're gonna see a Suchi. Nope, there's an Icy, but that'll do the trick though. Icy can tap down the Iron Claw next turn. Does Olivier have a disenchant though? Yes, he does. Yeah, that's unfortunate. White, of course, so good in answering threats with the swords and the disenchant. Both of us are playing those and also the balance, of course. I feel balance can be slightly better in my deck. Oh, there's a chain lightning. Does this uh, mean that maybe Olivier has a Wheel of Fortune in hand? Could be. Both of us having uh, one card, by the way. Now I have two after the draw. I'm on 13. I mean, again, it's looking pretty problematic for me. I mean, the life, I, my life goes down so quickly against these decks. Look at that. Now I've got Tron. One card in hand. So I guess I'm playing this out because I'm worried that maybe Olivier has a wheel. If he plays the wheel, I already want to have Tron. I don't want to throw away my, uh, my Urza's mine. But yeah, I wonder if you're Olivier, do you want to even play out the wheel at this point? You know, because you're winning anyway with your Iron Claw. Exactly. Why not just wait? Just wait and see what's going to happen. And this is the difficulty, by the way, when you're playing a Tron deck. And I think many people that, that, that have played with Tron in old school um, can acknowledge this, is that you want to have a strategy before you have Tron, pre-Tron, and then you want to have um, a strategy post-Tron, when you have the Tron on the board. And that balance is so difficult. You don't want to get stuck in a lot of expensive cards that you cannot play. But now I have Tron and you want to have that payoff. And I don't, you know, I'm still taking damage. Look at my life. I'm on six. It's actually going really bad. Okay, this is a really good top deck, finding the Suchi. Let's hope it stays alive. Or not. Look at that Olivier again, looking at his cards. I'm worried. Okay, there's another Bolt. It's going to put me on three. Oh, I mean, if he has a wheel, he's probably going to wheel, try to find... I think he's going to wheel here. Oh, man, I'm on three. Oh, no, this is so bad. Wheel of Fortune. There's a Disenchant. No targets, though, for me. Oh, this is so bad. I think a scenario that I can think of is that he draws into a chain or a bolt and I find a sorts and I can sorts my Suchi in response that can maybe buy me another turn, but, or I'm just lucky and Olivier doesn't find anything. That's of course another line, but it's highly unlikely. I mean, I believe he's played out a chain and a bolt or two chains and a bolt. Not quite sure, but anyway, there's enough in his deck still. Okay, there's a soul ring, putting a thumbs up. That's no bolt. Keeping my fingers crossed here at this stage. And if he doesn't have a bolt or a chain, it's actually really good news for me, for me because, oh, I want to say I have Tron, but look at this blood moon. Okay, there goes to Tron dream, but still I've got a lot of mana on board, so it's not too bad. But obviously I was hoping to untap with Tron. But hey, I'm still alive, so I'm not complaining at all. Don't get me wrong. I'm super happy to still be alive. Didn't expect to be alive. So hopefully I boarded in the uh, Ivory Towers. So that I can start, you know, gaining some life. Tapping two here. What am I going to do? Hey, there's a tower. There's another tower. So both Ivory Towers in my hand. That means five left on oh, no, those six, of course, because I had a draw into eight. So six cards in hand, passing the turn. You see me making that, that prayer gesture with my hands there, hoping that I stay alive another turn so I can start gaining life. And if I start gaining life, I actually have a chance here to get back into it. I thought I was dead actually after that wheel, but hey, I'm still here. Let's see what Olivier can do. I mean, if he has a flyer, it's still a problem for me. I guess there's the gargoyle. And of course, I cannot play out my, uh, my swords anymore because I don't have any white mana. Tapping another white. Okay, there's a Savannah line. For a moment, I was worried that he was going to play a swords on my Suchi. So as long as the Suchi can kind of stick. Oh, no, there's the swords. Okay. <laughs> I just shouldn't say these things out loud because then my opponent does it. Uh, anyway, there's the attack with the Iron Claw. Going to drop to five. But, you know, I'm also going to gain four. So I'm going to go up to nine. 
Ooh, divine offering, probably on one of my towers. Exactly. Oh, yeah, this is tough. This is really tough. So I'm going to go up to seven, I guess. I'm going to gain a life from the tower, from the uh, divine offering, I mean. Actually, my opponent gains a life. Yeah, yeah, I'm just going to gain two. It's not a crumble. Anyway, going to gain two from my ivory tower. So I'm on seven, but there's six damage on the board. Like I need a trike, for example. That would be quite nice. I wonder if I have a trike, what I should do. If I should spend three counters on killing the gargoyle, for example, because he still has a mountain open, or if I should kill the two ground creatures, or just only kill the line, or just not do it, just keep it a 4-4. Four, four. Ooh, it's ooh, interesting. Just talking about it gives me a headache. It looks like I'm a little bit in the tank as well. Six cards in hand. Six damage on the board on the side of Olivier. I'm on seven, so that would mean I would drop to one. Not really a position I want to get into. It looks like I'm going to tap six, so that indicates that I have a trike. Is that a Triskelion? Yes, it is. Okay, that's kind of good. And now the question is what to do with the three counters. Am I going to kill the gargoyle on the spot? Yeah, looking at him investing the one mountain, I guess I am. Yep, and I, can, I mean, this makes sense. It makes sense because I can still use my trike to block the line if he attacks with the line, trade that. And I guess I can take two from the Iron Claw Orc. I mean, I'd rather not, obviously, but then it would drop to five, would go back up to seven again because of the tower. Oh, man, I just wish I could have still had the double tower. That would have been majestic. Are we going to see another Disenchant? Divine Offering. Oh, oh, actually not on the tower. You're going to play it on the trike. I mean, that is going to give him six life. And then he can hit me for four, put me on three. Oh, man, there's the attack. Oh man, I've I've been I've been dead so many times. It feels like I'm just playing with borrowed time here against Olivier's deck. Again on three. And usually when you play against decks like Pinguini, as soon as you're on three, you're dead. It's the same as being dead, basically. But I'm lucky, I guess, that I keep getting these turns. Go back up to five because of my ivory tower. Yeah, taking back the land quickly. Exactly. I'm like, why am I playing out lands? I want to have cards in hand because of my tower. Another trike, perhaps? Another Triskelion. Okay, that is pretty good. Another trike. So now it's just a 4-4. Four, four. Gonna put my trike arms on there. Yeah, 4-4. Four, four. I'm feeling pretty good. I've got the 4-4. Four, four. I'm on 5. He at least needs a double bolt to kill me with direct damage. He cannot attack with the Iron Claw Orc, right? Or is it only blocking? It's probably only blocking, by the way, with the Orc. So he, he can uh, attack with the uh, Iron Claw Orc, I guess. But let's see what he's going to do. There's, oof, again, a Granite Gargoyle. Those Gargoyles are so annoying. I mean, it's a beautiful creature, don't get me wrong, but against my deck, it's so annoying. They're just hard to kill. And also, I mean, look at Olivier now. He's got two mountains untapped. So, you know, it basically has four toughness. So it's really difficult. I guess I'm gaining some life again from the tower. So that's good news. I need to find a way to, to really get rid of the gargoyle now. And again, I don't have any white mana because of the blood moon. That means I cannot play out my Swords to Plowshare. So it, I've got six cards in hand that may seem like a lot, but maybe they're just full of white cards that I cannot cast. Okay, what am I going to do? Tapping eight. Oh, there's a Fireball. Wow. So I wonder what I'm going to do. I'm just going to try to hit everything for two. So it looks like the Gargoyle is one. Yeah. So I guess I'm, I'm hitting the Iron Claw and the Gargoyle. And then, of course, killing the Granite. So I'm going to put three on each. Look at me attack. You're being aggressive. 
And it's, it's going really well with me. I'm on seven here. I mean, this is sweet. So I guess I did um, a fireball for three on the Granite Gargoyle and the Iron Claw Orc. And then, of course, Olivier gave it uh, uh, four toughness with the two mountains. And now I'm attacking here, and he's blocking it on the lion. So that's looking really good for me. Olivier here finding... Uh-oh, there's a little glitch. Okay, there's another lion. Not too bad. I'm not complaining. Still six cards in hand, I guess. Wow. So going to go up to nine. Remember, I was on... What was I on? Two? A certain point in this game? Now back up to nine. It's looking really good for me. Tapping two more. Oh, there's a Howling Mine. Wow. That is amazing. Howling Mine in combination with this tower attacking again. I mean, this is great. I'm just completely coming back into it. This is amazing. And I guess I have to exactly tap down the, uh, the Howling Mine or else Olivier is going to draw two cards. Now he's only going to draw one. So this is quite an inter interesting game number two. There's the attack. Probably going to kill the lion here. Exactly. Don't want to take any more damage. So killing the lion. The next turn I can attack still with the 2-2. Two -two. Ooh, he's not playing out anything. This is fantastic. Going to go up. Drawing two more cards. Tapping down the Howling Mine. Should still untap the Ruby there and, of course, the land. There's an Urtis Tower. Attacking for two. Seven cards in hand, passing the turn. Wow. Remember, Olivier is really high up in life because of all those uh, Swords to Plowshares that I had to play. So look at his life total here. He's on 22. Oh, yeah, and, of course, because of his Divine Offerings. I need a moment. Like, why is he so high? But it's the Divine Offerings. That Divine Offering on my Trike, of course, gave him a lot of life. So I still need a lot of time, but it's looking way better for me. Especially my life total gives me a lot of confidence having 11 life now. And Olivier only drawing one card a turn. I'm drawing two cards a turn. It's going to tap two planes. Oh, another Divine Offering. Now, of course, I can kill my own. Oh, no, he's going to play it, of course, on the Relic. Yeah, makes sense. Oh, and he's going to gain two more life. Going to go to 24. But worse, he's going to start drawing cards from my Howling Mine. Uh-oh, I don't want this to happen. Gaining even more life. Going back up to 14. Hopefully, I can find a Relic or an Icy Manipulator to tap down the Mine. I really don't want to give these aggressive decks more cards. There's another land. I wonder what I have in hand. You know, I'm not really playing out that much. Attacking for two. So Olivier on 22. I mean, my only white source with that uh, Blood Moon on the, on the board is a Mox Pearl. Yeah, look at that. Discarding a card. I think my hand's really full of white cards. Probably Swords and Dishing Chance and just a lot of lands, I guess. And now Olivier drawing two cards a turn because of my Howling Mine. That is pretty problematic. But of course, great for Olivier. I mean, this is an interesting match, you know, very swingy. And I guess for Olivier, he's still probably worried because, you know, life gain against an aggressive deck is usually uh, a no-no. And we see Olivier here tapping a red and a white. Okay, there's a Chain Lightning first. So just going to die one damage for Olivier, I guess. So he's going to go to 21. I mean, he still has that white mana floating. I wonder what that's for. Going to tap another white. Okay, there's the Savannah Lions. Not quite sure what that white mana, maybe I missed something. Anyway, gaining uh, some more life here. But now there's a Savannah Lion on the board. But I am on 17, which is quite nice. But look at that, really not finding anything. Another land. A Soul Ring, okay. I'm super mana flooded here. 
Oh, passing to turn again. Oh, after getting back into it, am I now going to still lose it? Olivier attacking for two. It's going to drop me on 215. Oh, disenchant! No, on the tower! Oh, no, 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 come on. Come on. Gargoyle as well. And I've already played out my fireball, meaning that I have a disintegrate still. There's a maze, but the maze is not a maze. The maze is a mountain. I'm playing it out like I'm happy that, hey, I've got a maze. No, I don't. I've got a mountain. This, this, this... Blood Moon is really killing me, and I didn't expect that, because when you look at my list, I mean, I'm playing Blood Moons myself in the sideboard, because it's not a huge problem. Okay, there's a wheel. Let's spin the wheel. You know, let's try to find something. <laughs> oh, look at that. I think I, I threw away a lot of swords there. Too bad that it didn't show what I was discarding. But yeah, probably just a hand full of white stuff, and, and knowing me, I'm probably gonna going to draw into my Mox Pearl now, and probably having discarded my Disenchants. But obviously I'm hoping here to find a Suchi, a Trike, just something, or a Relic Barrier for the Howling Mine, or an Icy. Passing the turn, what's in that hand? What, what did I just draw into? Gonna go from my graveyard here, I'm really worried. I just drew seven new cards and I didn't play out a single card. I mean, this is very concerning. I'm now really worried. What do I have in hand? Olivier now has a full grip of cards to work with. Attacking me for four first, dropping to 11. There's another Iron Cloak. More pressure on the board. A lion, perhaps. Another lion, of course. I mean, this is as to be expected. He just drew into seven, seven new cards, right? Come on. And of course, two from the draw. See, nine in hand. That's kind of insane. Now, now I have nine in hand. More lands! I'm just trying to play out all my lands this game. This is insane. Finally a creature. That's the Suchi. So at least I can block the ground creatures now. Assuming that Oliver doesn't have an answer. There's a Winter Orb. Yeah, I mean... It's, uh, it's something, but it's not great. And look at that. No Relic. No Icy. Just passing the turn. No Taunus' Coffin, for example, to take down the Gargoyle. Oh, my, 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 my. Yeah, there we see a Disenchant taking care of my Suchi. That is uh, as to be expected, of course, when your opponent has a full grip of cards. And, of course, that uh, Howling Mine is really helping Olivier here, drawing two cards a turn as well. Oh, man, I came back from, from a losing position, I feel, to a winning position. But now it looks like it's still Olivier's game. Animating here, we'll look at this swinging in for what 10 10 points of damage. It's gonna put me on one. Oh man, I am so toast. I'm so dead. I am so incredibly maybe a balance. No, because I don't have white Mox Pearl and a balance. That's what I need from the top. Remember, uh, uh both of my uh towers are also in the graveyard, so oh man. Can I? Mox Pearl? Balance? Please? Tapping two. What am I going to do here? Tapping six. Do I have a trike maybe? Okay, there's a trike. It's not going to work though. I mean, the trike is great. I mean, it can kill two lions, block the iron claw, but there's still that flyer. There's the pearl. Now I need a swords. Give me a swords. Or probably I already discarded them all when I played that wheel. Oh, man, it's looking so bad. Maybe I still have a Swords in hand, though. Fingers crossed. Play the Swords. Play the Swords. Okay, let's just, let's wait and see how this is going to... Ooh, he also has a Factory, of course. I'm still Toast, I think. He's going to attack with everything. I just want to know, do I have the Swords? I do have the Swords. Okay, so I can play it on the Gargoyle. I can... Lose the game? I don't think there's anything I can do. Oh, my camera is really... Okay, now it's back. So using two counters to kill both of the lions. Okay, but he's still attacking. Yeah, I can only block one. Yeah, that's it. Oh, look at my hand again. A lot of lands. Wow. 
Wow, 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 wow. But what an entertaining game number two. And please don't go away because we did play a game three. Uh, but, whew, I mean, looking back at this, I'm, I'm again, I'm disappointed because I feel like I did everything I had to do. I did it right. Like where in game one, I made a few misplays. In game two, I, felt, I feel like I did what I had to do. Came back from a losing position. Of course, I had a lot of luck that Olivier didn't find uh, any more burn, right? After that wheel, I should have died, end of story, but I was very lucky. Um, and then I got got back all the way up to, what was it, 17 life, and then still losing. That is pretty tough. But of course, also, Olivier, I have to say, man, you're playing this deck really, really well. My compliments to you, for sure. Um, you've won this match, but we did play game number three, so let's shuffle up and go to game number three. Game number three, here we go. So two games up already for Olivier. Congratulations, winning this episode, I guess. But hey, we're playing game three because we love to play Magic. And uh, yeah, I, I, I feel like my deck deserves a win. One win, hopefully. So uh, one game win, I mean. So let's let's see. Starting off really well, by the way, here with my uh, Library of Alexandria. Hopefully I don't run into a Blood Moon. There is a Soul Ring. So potentially next turn, Olivier could cast the Blood Moon, but keeping my fingers crossed here. Gonna draw into card seven. Gonna tap my Loa probably. Gonna draw into card eight, exactly. Drop my land for turn and pass, I think. Yep, there's an Urza's Mine. I'm probably gonna pass and hope for the best. And I mean, even if Olivier cannot find the Blood Moon, he does have the right deck to kind of force me to go off of the Loa plan because his deck is quite aggressive, right? Ooh, does he have a Blood Moon? No, no, there's a Gargoyle, so he can start attacking already next turn. So that's good news for me, at least, that I get to keep the Loa another turn. Untap, upkeep, and then draw. So I could consider using my Loa before the draw step, but if you already have a land in hand, I guess... It's probably better to... Okay, there's a mace. That's quite nice. So seven in hand. You could argue that it's better to draw that card. Ooh, changing my my decision here. Taking back the mace. Playing a plateau instead. Does that mean that I have a sword to plowshares in hand? Going to pass the turn here. So probably have a sword in hand. But what I wanted to say, you could argue that it's better to draw that extra card straight away. Unless you want to do it on end step like I want to do now. Who taking the damage going to 18. Interesting. Expected to have the swords here. So I'm a little bit puzzled that I decided not to play out the maze then. So I'm going to draw a card here on end step. And then going to play the swords. Okay. So decided to take those two points of damage. To see, kind of to wait and see what else Oliver was going, uh, Olivier was going to play out. Maybe to keep... Probably to keep a disenchant in my hand, you know, because then you can have a white floating and you can disenchant the Blood Moon. Whereas if I would have played the, the swords in combat and Olivier would have played the, the Blood Moon afterwards, I couldn't have played the disenchant then because my plateau would have been turned into a mountain. So I guess it's a good decision here, playing that maze, sending back the Iron Claw. And now, yeah, you can kind of see because I have that card advantage, I'm able to kind of, you know, manage the board. So drawing a card for turn extra here on the end step of Olivier. So eight cards in hand. Yeah, another swords. Two swords to plowshares there are now in the bin for me. Let's see what I can do. There's another plateau, so no Tron lands for me. I mean, ideally you want to draw into Tron and then draw two cards a turn with your Loa. So that you can start playing your robots. But um, this also works, I guess. Okay, there's a disenchant on that soul ring. Ooh, but now, I mean, he could play this blood moon now if he has it. I mean, I think I should have kept the disenchant. This is, this is a mistake here. But I'm not getting... Punished for it. He's playing the uh, Chain Lightning. Put me on 15. I mean, I could have played the Disenchant on end step. 
but I probably wanted to do it in his upkeep so that he didn't have that two mana. But yeah, that, I think that was a bad decision. Luckily, it didn't have big consequences for me tapping out here for a Suchi. So I can start hopefully attacking next turn, put some pressure on the life total of, uh, of Olivier, who's already on 24 after those two swords to plowshares. Let's see what Olivier can do. I mean, I think step one here is, is, is find a Blood Moon, right? To deactivate the Loa, that's the most important thing for him. And then he can start thinking again about how to win the game. And of course, Blood Moon would also take care of, uh, of the Maze of If. So he's really in the tank here, trying to find the line of play that's going to get him back into this. The good news for him, though, is he's on 24, and again, I'm on 15. You know, I mean, it's against this deck, my life goes down so quickly. So despite the fact I played a double swords, you know, and played out a maze, I still took five damage. Tapping three, what are we going to see? There's the Blood Moon, exactly. Yeah, this is exactly what Olivier needed, and... It makes me wonder, shouldn't I have kept the Disenchant in hand, you know, and just made sure that I would always have a Plateau and another land untapped so I can always respond with the Disenchant. That's probably what I should have done. But still, I've, I was able to use... There's a Soul Ring. I wanted to say I was able to use the, uh, the Loa quite often, so I can't complain about that. There's the attack for four. Olivier dropping here to 20. Tapping another four, maybe another Suchi, another Suchi hitting the board. Yeah, this is really good. And Olivier only having, I believe, two cards in hand there. Going to do more, it seems. Tapping two more. There's a Relic Barrier. Tapping two more. Oh, there's a Howling Mine. Yeah, this is... Right now, I'm emptying my hand, of course, after that Blood Moon. You know, because it deactivated my Loa, so it makes no sense to keep the seven cards in hand and... Um, that's what you see often, right? It has, it has happened to me as well that I was able to destroy the low and I was like, oh, great, now I can come back in the game. But then the following turn, my opponent starts to dump their entire hand on the battlefield and I, uh, I get crushed. And this was a really good turn for me. Let's see what uh, Olivier can do here. Tapping a red and a white. Oh, Divine Offering. That's going to give him some life again. Those Divine Offerings are really good against me. I mean, look at that. He's going to gain four, and he can attack with the Iron Claw. He can put me here on 13, which I'm sure he's going to do. I mean, you know, that's what you have to do with the Iron Claw. Turn it sideways. Exactly. There's the attack. I'm on 13. And despite that start with the Loa, right? I mean, Olivier is doing really, really well. Look at him go. I mean, I'm on 13. Um, he's on 24. I mean, I'm still in a good position because I'm drawing twice as many cards with the Relic uh, Howling Mine combination, and I probably have more cards in hand still. Two cards, I believe, for Olivier and four cards for me, or maybe even five. Attacking for four here first. So I'm going to put him on 20. Oh man, these Divine Offerings. Okay, there is a Triskelion. So if I'm smart, I'm going to make sure that I keep enough uh, counters on the trike that it can kill itself, because I really don't want to give Olivier six life again. So four cards in hand. It's looking really good for me, but the only thing I'm a little worried about is the fact that I'm on 13. I would love to find an ivory tower, for example, just to start gaining some more life. There is a tap there for a white. Are we going to see a divine offering here? Yep. Exactly. Is he going to go for the Relic Barrier? Yeah, I thought so, because that means he can start drawing cards that really worked for him. In, uh, what's that game? I'm thinking now, was it, was it game two, right? Where that really worked for him, taking out the, uh, the Relic Barrier, so he could start drawing two cards as well. I think it was. And that's, of course, the risk with that uh, Howling Mind Relic combo. There's the attack for eight. 
So, wow, dropping to nine there. That's big. That is huge. Okay, there's a tower, but I don't have that many cards in hand? Question mark. Is it still four? Five in hand. Okay, so I at least gain a life next turn, but take two damage from the orc. Could consider killing the orc here with uh, with the two tri counters. Maybe I should have just attacked with one creature instead of both. There's the attack. Yeah, you can see me thinking here, like, oh yeah, the Iron Claw Orc. <laughs> like, oh yeah. I don't want to take the risk. I am killing the Orc. There is a Mishra's Factory. Okay. Of course, it's a mountain, by the way, because of the, the Blood Moon. So I can still attack for six, put him on three. I think I should have taken the damage, by the way, looking back at it now. I should have just gone to 11. I mean, what's the chance that he can kill me there on the spot? I should have just gone to 11. Then I could have killed him next turn. Maybe I have an X spell in hand. Could that be? Anyway, we'll just have to wait and see. Looks like Olivier is going to do something else. Tapping to red here, it seems. No untapping again. I wonder what he's thinking about. There's a chain. Now the question is, what is he going to play the chain on? So he could play it here on the uh, on the Suchi or on the trike, or of course on my life total. If he plays it on the on the Suchi, he probably has another one. Now the thing is with the chain lightning, I could consider sending it back. Oh, look at me go. I'm sending it back. But now he can kill it, though. But then I can send it back again. Oh, this is nice. We're sending the chain lightning back and forth. So he's targeted my Suchi. Now he's sending it back to my Suchi. Now I'm paying another two to send it back to Olivier. So Olivier has killed my Suchi, but he had to pay a hefty price for it. He's, he took six damage. Now he's on three. That means I can actually win the next turn. If he doesn't play out, like if he has a Savannah line or something, he's, he's safe. No, he doesn't. Okay, it's looking really good for me. I think Olivier made a little mistake here, perhaps. Or does he have a disenchant? If he's got a disenchant, it's all good. Attacking here with my 2-2. Two -two. Are we going to see a disenchant? No, he's going to go to one. And then I can play. I can shoot him down with my trike. Right? Oh, I want to do something else, it seems. This is kind of odd, because I can win the game here on the spot. Am I not seeing it? Am I missing something? Am I worried about a divine offering, perhaps? Look at me go, just passing the turn here. Interesting. I mean, one would assume... Okay, there's a chain. Yeah, I can send it back and I can kill him. He's showing me his hand. Nothing, nothing was there. I guess I was worried about the divine offering. Could that be the reason? Because then if I, if I use my counter to kill him, in response, he could play divine offering. Right? And then he can gain 6 life, go up to 7, take a damage, go to 6. That's probably why I didn't use the last counter. But yeah, that, that was a funny ending. I was like, okay, just shoot that last counter, but I didn't. I guess it was the right decision. Maybe I was a little bit traumatized because of all the divine offerings. Anyway, uh, Olivier, congratulations for winning this match 2-1. And uh, thank you for becoming a patron of the show. It was really fun to play against you and really cool to see you uh, piloting this deck. And here you see the deck of Olivier, by the way. And like I said in the introduction, it's a really nice deck and very budget friendly. So if you're looking to, you know, build a deck for old school, if you're new to the format, this is a great deck to start with, you know. And uh, the nice thing is you can like slowly upgrade it with dual lands. You can maybe try to try to get some power on the long run, etc., etc. You know, it's a really, it's a, it's a fun, it's a fun, uh, it's a fun deck. It's interesting to play with. I've played some pink weenie as well in my day. It's a really nice color combination. Anyway, this was the episode for this week, I, or for today, because there are multiple a week actually. Uh, I hope you liked it. If you did, please consider leaving a like, comment, and share this on your socials. 
All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. And then there's one more thing that you can do, and that is of course become a patron of the show via patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. And the cool thing is when you become a patron, your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video. And if you support me at the right tier level, you can also play a game against me and maybe even make an episode together like Olivier and myself did just in this uh, in this episode. So if that's something for you, please visit patreon.com slash Timmy Talks and find out how you can support the channel as a patron. Okay, and now that that's all out of the way, I want to thank you for watching this episode and I would love to go to the end scroll and have a look at my amazing, fantastic, wunderbar patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. Here we go. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Somebody can see.